The use of psychedelic substances is one of the most controversial talking points in modern society. Whether they're synthetic drugs or natural plants, there's no denying the incredible effect these substances have on the human psyche. Vivid hallucinations and divine insights are just some of the visions people experience when going through a trip. They're so potent that they may have even shaped the course of human history itself. Psychedelic drugs have occupied crucial spaces in nearly every culture across the planet, from the temples of ancient Greece to the court of the Chinese emperors and beyond. Ancient and modern societies have always had a close relationship with psychoactive substances. My name's Andrew. Today, we'll be diving deep into the fascinating history of psychedelics and how they've changed society forever. Let's get started. Chapter 1. Different Cultures The first use of psychedelic drugs in history can be traced all the way back to the Neolithic era. On the wall of a prehistoric cave found in Algeria, archaeologists found a mural painting of a bee-headed shaman with psilocybin mushrooms sprouting from his skin. The mural is thought to be over 7,000 years old. Our ancestors routinely used naturally occurring drugs such as cannabis and opium as part of their religious rituals. Psychedelics are thought to have been used frequently in shaman rituals, which involved a person entering a drug-induced trance to commune with the spirit world. Traces of poppy seeds stuck in the teeth of prehistoric remains and cannabis seeds found within Neolithic boughs tell us that psychedelic drugs have long been an integral part of our culture and that the earliest forms of humans used them all over the planet. Most interesting of all is the fact that researchers have found that prehistoric man often used psychedelic substances when burying his dead. The intentions behind this are hard to say, but one explanation given is that the deceased close ones would ingest the drugs in order to bring on intense hallucinations, which they believe were visions of the gods. By communicating with the dead and the divine, they could guide their family member to the afterlife long after they'd passed away. Whatever the reason for their initial use, the presence of psychedelics in history didn't subside after the Neolithic era. Hinduism is one of the oldest religions in the world, and some of its most sacred practices are linked to mind-altering drugs. The most notable of these are the Soma drink, which would be imbibed by priests in order to receive visions from the gods during Vedic rituals. Interestingly, we can't say for sure which plant was used in these ancient rituals. The knowledge has been lost to modern historians, though a few candidates have been put forward. Fly agaric fungus, a mushroom that's known to induce profound hallucinations in those who consume it, was thought to potentially be a key ingredient in the creation of the Soma drink. Not all who took part in rituals that involved mind-altering substances did so purely for religion or spiritual reasons. Some used psychedelics to better carry out dark deeds. The British Empire sent thousands of shipments filled with opium to China during the 19th century in order to keep the population addicted. Perhaps the most well-known example of this throughout history is the legendary Order of Assassins that operated in Persia and the Levant during the 12th and 13th centuries. The Assassins believed in Islam but were considered heretics by many of their contemporaries as they were part of the Islami Shiite Muslim sect which differed heavily from other Shiite and the Sunni Abbasid Caliphate at the time. The Order became infamous for its killing of high-profile individuals in broad daylight. Neither Christian crusaders nor Islamic leaders were safe from their attacks. As the assassinations were carried out in public to send a message to those who would stand against the order, those who were sent out on a mission rarely returned home. It was the ultimate sacrifice for the cause. Order members supposedly smoked the hashish plant to steady their nerves or even induce a state of hallucination. This was how many explained the incredible feats of bravery that the assassins managed to pull off. The name of the order and the modern word assassin is even reportedly derived from the hashish plant. Proving the validity of the claims is difficult, however. Many of the scholars who wrote of the assassins' love of drugs were enemies of the order and used the name hashashin in a pejorative manner. It's impossible to say whether the claims were simply propaganda, entirely accurate, or someplace in the middle. 
Whether the Order of Assassins was motivated by hashish or blind, unwavering faith, it's clear to see that the use of mind-altering drugs played a significant role in medieval cultures found in the Middle East. If we look to the New World, the Americas, we see that the use of psychedelics in traditional culture was potentially even more prevalent than in Europe and Asia. Head deep into the Chihuahuan Desert, straddling the border of the southern United States and northern Mexico, and you'll soon stumble upon a spineless cactus plant known as peyote. Peyote contains psychedelic alkaloids and has been a cornerstone of many Native American cultures for millennia. Archaeologists have discovered traces of mescaline, the chief component of peyote that induces hallucinations, in remains that date back to around 3500 BCE. Tribes all across North America incorporated the drug into their sacred rituals and even their medicine, as the plant was used to heal both physical and spiritual wounds. Native Americans believed the psychedelic aspect of peyote allowed them to communicate with supernatural entities and tap into their spiritual self. Users reported experiencing vivid mental clarity and thought they'd taken a step closer to the divine forces that rule this world. Just as psilocybin mushrooms were consumed to speak with the deceased in Neolithic culture in Europe, peyote is part of many Native American burial rites. So, it's clear to see that psychedelic substances, be they mushrooms, hashish, or peyote, played an essential role in shaping cultures all over the planet and in many different time periods. From the plains of North America in prehistory to the mountains of Persia in the Middle Ages, hallucinogenic drugs were commonplace. Now, I want to draw your attention to what I consider one of the most fascinating and mysterious cultural practices in history. We turn now to ancient Greece, where a particular cult may have conducted rituals that left the greatest minds of antiquity in awe. What's most intriguing of all is that psychoactive substances may have played a vital role in shaping the course of historical events. Chapter 2 The Ancient Greeks If you head to Athens, the capital of Greece, you'll no doubt be drawn to the mighty Acropolis. The ruins of this impressive temple stand tall atop the Attica Plateau, which overlooks the ancient city. It's a testament to the ingenuity of the ancient world and has become one of the most famous associations with the classical period throughout modern society. But not all of ancient Greece's treasured secrets were held in Athens. Take a six-hour walk east to Eleusis and you'll find the ruins of the fabled Eleusinian Sanctuary. Many centuries ago, the Ulicinian Sanctuary was a grand temple dedicated to the cult of Demeter and Kor. Demeter is the Greek goddess of the harvest, and Kor, better known now as Persephone, is her daughter. Demeter and Persephone played a central role in Greek folklore. The god of the underworld, Hades, would bring Persephone down to his deathly domain for half of the year, which always left her mother in a state of anguish. As a result, she'd leave the earth's plants and crops to wither and die in the cold winter, only bringing warmth back to the land when her daughter returned to her side six months later. Considering how vital crop rotation and growth were to the well-being of ancient civilizations, it's no wonder that the Greeks viewed Demeter and Persephone as divine beings worthy of the utmost respect. The temple dedicated to their honor had to be one of the most sacred places in the entire ancient world in order to prevent famines or droughts. The temple was so important to Greek culture that all people, regardless of their city-state affiliations, could visit to offer tribute. Enemies made peace within its walls to keep the land sacred. The cult that guarded the temple was held in the highest regard. The initiation rites, known as the Eleusinian Mysteries, are the most famous rituals of the ancient Greek world and have been the subject of many studies in academia. Despite their fame, the secrets behind the rites have largely remained hidden throughout history, as the cult made it their mission to protect the knowledge of their ceremonies throughout antiquity. But why are historians so fascinated by the rites of this temple in particular? 
Well, many of the most notable figures of the ancient world, including the first Roman Emperor Augustus and the playwright Isaclus, participated in the mysteries and experienced incredible visions. The Roman statesman Cicero writes that from them, mankind learned the fundamentals of life. Some parts of the ritual consistently made even the sharpest mind stand in awe of the temple's magnificence, but nobody knows for sure what it entailed. One prevalent theory in the academic world states that the cult used psychedelic substances as part of their initiation rites. Initiates would ingest the substance and experience a psychedelic trip which they believed to be divine revelations. Is there any reason to believe this theory? Yeah, sort of. Though it's of course difficult to confirm or dispel this theory entirely, we do know that a drink called Kaikion was used during the ritual. Kaikion was often made from a mixture of water, barley, grated cheese, and wine. Some scholars suggested that the cult of Demeter would also add ergot, a fungus which has similar psychedelic alkaloids to LSD to Kaikion, to bring the drinker closer to the gods. This theory wasn't backed by any substantive evidence until a breakthrough discovery was made in the 1990s. On the other side of the continent, far away from the coasts of Greece, at the Mas Castellar site in Spain, archaeologists discovered drinking vessels at a shrine dedicated to Demeter and Persephone, the two goddesses worshipped by the Ulicinian cult. The vessels contained traces of beer and ergot. This gave much more substance to the idea that those who partook in the elusive Eleusinian mysteries ingested some kind of psychedelic drug during the ritual. Those who supported the theory seemed to be proven right. With that in mind, there are some significant holes in the idea of psychedelic drugs being ingested during the Eleusinian mysteries. First, there's no evidence to support the theory that any mind-altering drugs besides alcohol were used in any other ancient Greek worship rite. It's possible that the mysteries could have been unique to classical antiquity, but it's unlikely. Second, LSD is a synthetic substance derived from a part of ergot. The ergot fungus does not in and of itself induce hallucinations. In fact, consuming the fungus can induce adverse side effects, such as nausea, dizziness, and even death. Ergot is a poisonous fungus that's caused widespread disease throughout history. Third, ergot is a parasitic fungus that grows on rye and barley. As rye and barley are vital ingredients of beer, there's a good chance that the traces of ergot in the drinking vessel found at the sacred site were more a result of bad crops used in the making of the drink than a mixture deliberately brewed to induce hallucinogenic episodes. Fourth, there are written accounts from ancient Greek contemporaries which describe the preparation of the Kaikion drink, and none include any mention of psychedelic substances. Goat cheese, onion, and wine are the most exotic ingredients typically listed. So, did the ancient Greeks use psychedelic drugs to enter into visionary trances during the famous Eleusinian Mysteries rites? Perhaps there's good reason to believe that some kind of mind-altering substance was used throughout classical history, but there's far from any concrete evidence proving its presence either. What's most interesting about the theory on the Eleusinian Mysteries is how it ties back to ideologies in the modern world. To show you what I mean, we need to jump over 3,000 years into the future. That's right, a 3,500-year-old ritual may be ideologically linked to the hippie movement of the 1960s in America. Chapter 3. The 1960s As the threat of war loomed over both the USSR and the USA during the Cold War, many saw the potential of nuclear annihilation as the chief problem holding humanity back. They believed that by spreading kindness, peace, and harmony across the world, the people of Earth would come together and do away with the weapons of mass destruction. These people were known as hippies, and their impact on cultural norms extends far beyond their disdain for nuclear weapons. Hippies advocated for a break from artificial man-made society and pushed for a return to nature, which they saw as the antidote to modern civilization's woes. Hippies stood in direct opposition to the war in Vietnam and formed their own counterculture during the 1960s. 
Essentially, anything that was seen as taboo or unconventional by most people during the era, hippies were in favor of. They organized protests calling for the end of all wars, demanded freedom from authoritarian dictators, and wore vibrant clothing to distinguish themselves from the no-nonsense shirt and tie fashion of their time. Ironically, hippie culture became a symbol of the 1960s. In a decade marred by international crises such as the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Vietnam War, it's interesting to note that a movement that advocated for global peace became the staple. Hundreds of thousands flocked to Woodstock, an incredibly famous music festival held in 1969. Whether the opponents of the movement liked it or not, there's no denying that hippies had an enormous amount of influence in shaping the culture of the 60s and 70s. One area of hippie culture in particular has gained international notoriety, the liberal use of psychedelic drugs. Since hippies stood against everything that was seen as proper and normal, the idea of ingesting substances that were seen as improper was very attractive. They would not only be standing up against the cultural norms of the time, but they'd also be experiencing heavenly highs. The 1960s and 70s came to be known for the widespread use of these drugs, and the era is literally referenced to as the psychedelic era. Everything from music to politics were being influenced by those who pushed to remove surrounding these drugs. Safe to say, there are few, if any, periods throughout history when society was so influenced by psychedelics. The cultural impact was felt on an international level too. The hippie movement and its attitude towards mind-altering substances sprung up in the United Kingdom. But hippie culture's connection to drugs goes deeper than just contrarian. As hippies advocated for a return to nature, the use of hallucinogenic substances derived from natural sources was viewed as humans finally connecting with Mother Earth. The movement also had roots in spiritualism, with some practitioners turning to a kind of neo-paganism. Worship of the Earth became popular, as did Wicca. Through things like LSD or psilocybin mushrooms, many hippies experienced deep hallucinations that they believed opened up doors in their psyche. The process was seen as a way of tapping deeper into one's spiritual being and reconnecting with natural energies. As such, hippies made the decriminalization and liberalization of recreational drugs a key part of their political activism. Those substances like magic mushrooms and LSD remain illegal throughout the world today. The push to remove the stigma associated with the use of these drugs had a profound effect on future culture. Hippies set the foundations for the decriminalization of marijuana in some states of the US and managed to change attitudes regarding mind-altering substances. So, in the 60s and 70s, one half of society saw psychedelics as totally immoral, while the other saw it as the key to unlocking one's spiritual self. But how can the hippie movement be linked to the Eleusinian mysteries and our understanding of the history of psychedelics as a whole? In their fight to destigmatize LSD and other drugs, they caught the attention of scholars. After all, the 1960s saw the development of many new psychedelic substances, and many began to wonder if there could be any parallels drawn between ancient societies and contemporary users. The notion of the rituals associated with the Eleusinian mysteries bringing about visions for those who partook in them first surfaced in Carl Karenyi's 1960 work Eleusis. From this assumption, others inferred that psychedelic drugs must have been involved in some way or another to induce such vivid hallucinations. The idea of Soma being made from fly agaric also first appeared in the 1960s too, when American banker R. Gordon Wasson put forward the theory in 1968. By pointing to past figures of great importance who serve as society's cultural foundation, an argument could be made that if they partook in psychedelic drug use, people today should be able to too. The 60s and 70s are such a critical period of interest for those studying the history of psychedelics, as it saw a shift in not only how society viewed the use of those substances in the present, but also the past. History is far from over. Though we've looked deep into the past today, 
the truth is that society's relationship with psychedelic substances continues to evolve. How will different cultures view these drugs far into the future? Will we turn our back to our historical roots and remove the stigma surrounding them, or choose to restrict their use? Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. Until next time.